It's past the vazool, baby. Come on in. Welcome to the Scream Until You Like It Amityville Horror Retrospective, Part 2. I am one of your hosts, Ryan, and with me, again, thankfully, is, I don't know after this movie, but she's here right now anyway, is uh, Nicole. Nicole, how are you doing? Good, how are you? Doing great. Oh, Jesus Christ. This is going to be a fun one. We're on a list, I guarantee it. <laughs> so yeah, uh, as I said, this is Part 2 of our Amityville Horror Retrospective, which means we watched Amityville 2, The Possession. So before we get into the movie, Nicole, uh, just do what we did last week. Figure uh, this thankfully isn't going to be the only movie we're going to be talking about tonight. <laughs> um, what uh, what you've been watching this week? Uh, well, I finished uh, Midnight Mass, which was phenomenal. And I actually watched the first season of The Exorcist. That's right. You were talking about this. I forgot there was even an Exorcist show. Yeah. So is it? Um, does it follow the movies or? It does. Yeah, okay. it does. I don't want to say anything in case nobody's seen it yet because there's a big, you know, oh, reveal a... in there. So I, <laughs> I don't want to give any spoilers, but it is fantastic. Okay. I do mean that. I don't know. I'm not a big Exorcist person, but I mean I've mm -hmm. seen all of them. So there's really no reason. There's only like two seasons of that show too, isn't there? Yeah, so far, yeah. Oh, so far, so it has. I thought so. It has I not don't been know. Canceled. I'm, I'm oh, kind of okay. hoping it hasn't. I don't know for sure though. Okay. Either way, two seasons. I could probably get if I try, but I mean, I haven't even gone back to watch Midnight Mass. It's our last discussion. <laughs> you gotta get on that. We gotta get on it. It's so good. Uh, anything else? Uh, no, that's it. I was I was supposed to go see Night Swim today, uh, but we got snowed in. So. Uh, yeah, we're snowed in here too. Yeah. Yeah. So hopefully next week. Yeah. Fucking nature. Let me tell you, man. It was like, I, I can't remember the last time. I don't think in my lifetime I've ever had a green New Year's in Ontario. Mm -hmm. And it was just like three days ago. All of a sudden, Mother Nature was like, oh, shit, that's right. It's supposed to be winter. <laughs> Look at this shit. Look at this shit. This is from like three days ago. We had nothing. We had green grass three days ago. Now I got this. Bullshit. And <laughs> fucking dumped like three feet of snow on us. It's still going. She forgot my kids haven't my it. kids haven't been to school at all this week yet. And it doesn't really? look like they're going tomorrow either. Wow. I just got done watching a double feature of some Texas Chainsaw movies. Yes. Um, we watched 2017's Leatherface, yeah. which you love. I love that movie, yes. And I hate. Yes. <laughs> That's nothing new. <laughs> and then we watched Texas Chainsaw Massacre, The Next Generation. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> which you hated. <laughs> and I loved. Yes. Yes. I, yes. I, I, I do give, I do give props to Matthew McConaughey because he gave it his all. <laughs> I mean, he was. He is in a different movie. He, yeah. <laughs> you know, we watched that with the uh, with the Hamityville gang there, with a lot of the regulars. Yeah, it was nice. It was a good time. It's always it's, nice when we get together on Discord there. Absolutely, it is. I love it. But yeah, Matthew McConaughey in Next Generation and <laughs> Leatherface. Yeah. 2017 Leatherface is too good of a movie to be part of the Texas Chainsaw franchise. That's my biggest gripe with it. It just feels so out of place. I understand that completely. But Lily Taylor, who is one of my favorite actresses on the planet, is just, she's incredible. She really is. She holds that together. 
I think I said this on the Discord too. Lily Taylor is one of those actresses that's just even when she's in a bad movie, it's she's still good. good in it. Like you're like at yeah. least like Lily Taylor's good in this. I got yeah. that going for me. And she's great. She she can she can be evil and she can be the the great mom. You know, she's just fantastic. No, she was definitely the highlight of whatever the rest of it was. Um, <laughs> it's a it's a who done it? Except it's. Really obvious who's doing it. <laughs> but I don't know. It's um I think it was Clint who said it feels less like Texas Chainsaw and more like an origin story for the wrong turn franchise. Yes. And I could I now granted wrong turn is nothing but a basically a ripoff of the Texas Chainsaw franchise. So yeah. I can see, but I, it definitely had that. Uh, I don't even know how to describe it. Uh, and I know Texas Chainsaw is sleazy too, but mm -hmm. the Wrong Turn franchise to me has just been like extra sleazy. And this definitely had that feel to it. But it was directed, I can't remember the names of them. It was directed by those guys that did the movie Inside. Okay. I have not seen that one yet. Yeah. You would probably like it. Um, it is actually a, a well revered horror movie. Uh, it came out during that. Uh, new wave uh french extreme horror mm -hmm. so like you got your uh your high tensions right uh your martyrs um mm -hmm. and inside was part of that okay um it uh yeah it uh i will never watch it again it is one of the most awful things i've ever seen and i will fully admit the reason i will never watch it again is because it does too fucking good of a job at what it set out at what it sets out to do makes it's you want to take a too, shower afterwards it's too <laughs> horrific it's too horrific for me i yeah. can't I can't do it i like a bit of fun in my horror movies and this is devoid of any fun okay um but yeah other than that what the fuck else did i watch oh i finally saw the barbie movie ah what'd you think of that i absolutely loved it jesus <laughs> shut the front door <laughs> Hated it. Really? Hated it. The The costumes and the set designs were fantastic. Like you felt like you were in Barbie land, you know? Um, I just, I did not like the message. I understand how, I understand the, the audience that it's geared towards and mm. they liked it. It was not for me at mm. all. I didn't think it was going to be for me, but man, by the, by the time you get to the end and Ken is just singing that I am Ken song, <laughs> I just... <laughs> Just and they're all there, Ken. Like, they're all Ken, except uh, for Alan. Alan, he was so great. He was great. He was funny. Every time he was on screen, I was laughing. That's too bad you didn't like it. But um, yeah, I mean, I can't. I'm not surprised at this point. If I like something. <laughs> we 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 are hot and cold all the time. Although I do feel this. Hey, this is a good segue. I do feel the stars are going to align. I, with I our think... opinions on Amityville too. They definitely are. Yes, we are in oh, agreement for right. only the second time. <laughs> Do we both love it? Do we both hate it? You'll have to wait and find out. You're probably going to find out pretty quick though. Yeah. <laughs> so released in 1982. Uh, Jesus. So this is a synopsis from IMDb because okay. I didn't put a lot of research into this because <laughs> fuck this movie. Um, a dysfunctional family, no shit, moves into a new house, which proves to be satanic, resulting in the demonic possession of their teenage son. Five years ago, the Lutz family fled their home in Amityville, New York. They were lucky to escape with their lives. But the previous owners, the Montellis, weren't so lucky. They were caught by the original evil that possessed the house, an evil that drove their son to destroy everything and everyone he loved. <laughs> Now, Amityville 2, The Possession, rated R. Starts tomorrow, AFCO Westwood, Paramount Hollywood, and selected theaters. Amityville 2, The Possession, stars James Olsen, his father, Ademski. Uh, I apologize, by the way, to anybody watching this. I had the notes up on my computer, but then I had to switch computers, so I'm looking at my phone now. Burt Young. Oh, that's right. Burt Young was in this. Yep. Uh, Root. Root. Tanya Alda, she was the mom. Mm -hmm. Jack Magner as uh, Sonny, uh, and Diane Franklin as 
Patricia Montelli. Diane Franklin and Burt Young are the only names I recognize from this okay. movie. Um, um, and it was, uh, sorry, I forgot. It was directed by, now this makes a lot of sense. It was directed by Damiano Damiani, a uh, French director known for basically making a lot of uh, late 60s, early 70s exploitation cinema. He can probably go back to that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's uh, that's our notes for the movie. Nicole, you want to start us on this fucking train wreck? Oh, God. Uh, <laughs> there will be spoilers, first of all. This <laughs> new <laughs> basic story, new family moves in, everybody dies the end. It took them an hour and 44 minutes to do that. Honestly, it felt like it was three hours long. It really did. It's, I love the cast. I love the cast. I love Burt Young. I'm from Philly. He will always be Paulie in the Rocky movies. I don't want you missing, huh? And I don't raise you to go with this scumbum. Yeah, come on. You want to hit on me? Come on. I'll break both your arms so they don't work for you. And, uh, Diane Franklin, of course, is fantastic. Rutanya Alda is... Did you ever see Mommy Dearest? No more <laughs> Is that the one about uh, Joan, Joan Crawford? Crawford. Mm -hmm. mm. I had to... Uh, I tried to watch it when we did... Uh, when I did the Hormonal Werewolves episode on uh, Baby Jane. Mm-hmm. Um, and I got 15 minutes into that movie and I couldn't do it. I turned it off. It okay. just, it just made me feel, I mean, it, it, it was, again, it was doing what it was set out to be doing. That was just too much for me. I didn't oh, okay. give me the ink. <laughs> that's, um, pro that's probably her biggest role that she's known for. She was Carol Ann, Joan Crawford's assistant in the movie. Oh, okay. Okay. She was also in the deer hunter, um, and a few others, but I've never actually seen the deer hunter. <laughs> Lips are yeah. uh, <laughs> I love her, you know, Diane Franklin, Burt Young. The cast was great. And surprisingly, a lot of the acting was great from those yes. three. Uh, <laughs> it was, it was, oh God, I, I'd rather watch Texas Chainsaw Next Generation again than watch that again it was creepy and i don't mean creepy scary creepy i mean creepy like my skin's crawling and i feel dirty creepy with some of the scenes that were in this movie it was <sighs> the effects were horrible even for 1982 the effects were horrible we're gonna disagree here because i actually thought the effects were really were, were actually quite fun i one of the few takeaways i took from this movie is i enjoyed the the effects we'll get into them a little later when we're talking about some key scenes from the movie but okay. so far i'm right on board with you right up until you mentioned the effect yes <laughs> it was even even in the beginning when they first move in and we first see the older brother and sister in the attic and they're just having mm -hmm. a conversation i am my brain immediately went to incestuous it went to something's going to happen between these two i got a flowers in the attic type feel watching these two together and i was not wrong because it's not wrong i just i can't even i have like i said i have two pages of of a list of this movie of notes on this movie and it's not none of it is good there's so many problems and we don't have enough time to go through them all but i was just writing down honestly we don't. Just... the editing was horrible absolutely horrible there was mm -hmm. no flow at all no Every time I thought the movie was going to end, it didn't. As you say, you mentioned this before too. Um, how the you you thought the movie was going to end, and you're like, "Holy shit!" There's still like thirty something minutes left in this. Yeah. The movie. So spoilers. Like this is basically a very loose retelling of the DeFeo murders. Um, and the movie ends with the DeFeo murders, but there's still like thirty five minutes of movie left after that. Yeah. And you're I, just I sitting there like, it. "What the fuck." This can happen. Yeah. Apparently, a really shitty remake of The Exorcist can happen. Yeah. Oh, this was beyond shitty. Uh, 
every, like I said, every time I thought it was going to end, it didn't. And they had so many opportunities to end it well, mm -hmm. to have that dark, grim ending, like the original, like The Exorcist. And they didn't. You know, he he kills the whole family. The cops come. They drive away with him. And that would have been a great ending. Very dark. No, now we have him in the police station. And now we have a trial. And now we have have the priest breaking him out of the, There's a whole other, yeah, there's the two separate facility. movies here. It is. That's what it felt like. It felt like there were two or three movies and they just squashed them together with no care at all. So you'd it, mentioned like with him uh, coming out of the, uh, like getting arrested and leaving in the car, that would have been, I think the best place to end the movie would have been when the priest is going back to the house at night there and it's snowing and the mm -hmm. door to the house opens and he sees the ghost of the daughter. Yep. I think that would have been a great place to end the movie. That would have been fantastic. Like I said, there were, there were so many times that it could have ended well, and they mm -hmm. didn't take that opportunity at all. No, it just kept on giving, and we didn't want any of it. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's time to stop. It's time to stop, okay? <laughs> Like when that grandmother <laughs> offers you tuna casserole and you hate it and she just keeps dumping it on your plate. Just keeps dumping it. You don't want to upset grandma. <laughs> yeah, and now you're sick and she just keeps dumping it. That's what this movie felt like. Oh, yeah. 110%. Yeah, that's a perfect... This movie <laughs> is grandma's tuna casserole. <laughs> but, I mean, but like you mentioned the acting and everybody is competent. Uh, competent to very good. Um, like, uh, what's her name? Crap, I already <laughs> forgot it. I'm terrible with names. Uh, she was also in the Bill and Ted movie. She played the sister, Diane Franklin. Yeah. Diane Franklin was fantastic. She, she was, was probably great. the highlight of the movie for me. Yes, she was. Um, the guy who played Sonny isn't terrible either. Uh, Jack Langan or something. Yeah, Jack Magner. Sorry. So funny thing about Jack mm -hmm. Magner, I'm like, I was watching it, and I'm like, I recognize this guy from something. Mm -hmm. And I was looking at his IMDb, and it was real easy to find out what I recognize him from because the dude's been in like two movies. He's been in this. And he played a security guard at the beginning of Firestarter. Gosh, wow. At the airport or something. Okay. I recognized him from that. And that's literally the only two movies this guy's been in. Wow. Which is surprising to me because he wasn't, he's not bad. Like, he's, he's, and as far as horror movies go, he's probably, I dare say, good. <laughs> as um, far as horror movies go, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, like I've definitely seen far worse actors be in several more movies. I don't know, if, but I didn't look into his history. Maybe he just didn't want to do acting anymore. Or something right. happened there, but yeah. What do you think of the? Uh, what do you think of the priest? I thought the priest was great. He's, and I, I don't put this on the actor. I put this on the writing and the directing. There were so many times when he had the opportunity to be, like Matthew McConaughey in Next Generation. He had the <laughs> opportunity to be emotional and aggressive and shocked and and he was just he just played it very flat yeah he was always kind of just monotone yeah um but again like you're dealing with a director who's and you see this a lot in other movies when the director's first language isn't english yeah uh sometimes some of those nuances like you see actors that are otherwise really great they're just not that something gets lost in the translation yeah. Um, not a fault to the director, not a fault to the actor, really. It's a fault to the studio. Like, if you're going to hire a director who can't understand the nuances of the English language, then maybe you don't hire a director to make an English movie. Right. Or hire an interpreter or something. Like, <laughs> yeah. but, <laughs> um, for them to communicate. I mean, he definitely did a better job than the guy who directed Troll 2. And you can't piss on hospitality. I won't allow it. No, but, <laughs> uh, I can't say I've been fortunate enough to see that one. So, as much as I do hate this movie, I got to admit the uh, the actual scene with the where the murders take place, the DeFeo quote unquote. I don't I can't remember what the family's called in this. The the Montelli family or something. I think so. Yeah, something like that. Um, but uh, like it's it's the DeFeo murders. Um, that scene. I remember watching it when I was a kid. I really should not have watched this movie when I was a kid. No, um, I didn't want to watch it as an adult. <laughs> I remember that scene uh, when I was a kid hitting me pretty hard, like it uh, cre uh, scaring me quite a bit. And even as an adult watching this again, I just watched this before we uh, came on tonight. Me too. And it still 
like it's shot well the lighting is creepy with the uh the thunder and the lightning which is weird because oh but we don't know how much time has passed i was gonna say because later in the movie the priest is standing and it's snowing but i mean he's been in he's been in jail he's going to court it might have been months by that point yeah because yeah, they had his like, birthday party and it was kind of warm out everybody was dressed light yeah and then it's snowing yeah yeah we get the thunder we get the lightning we get the uh you know uh, we get the sounds of the gunshots happening. I think it was a really in, impactful scene. And I agree with you that the. I do think it, it would have been a cool ending to have the, the ghost in the doorway, but the movie really needed to end there. Yeah, it did. It, it did not have to have the priest breaking Sonny out of, of the mental institution. And it, it, there was just the one, the one scene that I really, think should have not been cut but had to be trimmed down by at least half was the point of view scene when Sonny was getting possessed he heard something in the basement he went down and it was just him following him up the stairs and into his room that was like a 10 minute scene that and that 10 minutes a lot a long, of time yeah 10 <laughs> i'm like okay he must be just making his oscar reel or something because it was just the camera following him around the house for 10 minutes. Yeah, that was brutal. And then the gun floating in front of like, I don't, that was, <laughs> that was ridiculous. The gun and the paintbrushes. When, when it oh, was with the, 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 the night little... that the father beat the hell out of the kids. Yeah. With the paintbrushes floating in the, yeah. Ugh, like Jesus you could Christ. see the fishing Fuck line. Like, come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. Um, but you said you didn't like the special effects. So like when Sonny goes like full blown, like freaking uh, like imp from doom, yeah. you didn't, uh, you didn't, you didn't like the look of the, I thought it was awful. That's like, too even bad. For 80s it, it, standards. It was it, awful. Good news. It pops up again in the next one. <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> um, they, you, you talked about how great the thunder and rain and everything was. Mm hmm. I'm watching this scene. I'm going, the strobe lights over there and the fire hoses over there. It was so unrealistic. <laughs> I, I'm no, talking no. about the atmosphere. <laughs> the atmosphere of the scene's good. Atmosphere. Even yeah. with the fire hoses. Were... Um, I'm trying to think of another great example of special effects in this, but. Uh, the blood, all the blood in the movie coming out of the sink and coming out of the priest's. Um, oh, yeah. Holy water wand. I don't know what it's called. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, it holy water like, wand works for me. It was it was clear. Blood is not clear. It was clear. No, but I mean, we can't knock the blood too much because uh, even from the days of like you got your uh, you know your spaghetti westerns and your Dawn of the Dead's and your uh, Lamberto Bava and uh, Dario Argento flicks, blood has many colors. Yes, <laughs> all on the reddish spectrum, but many colors. <laughs> I am trying to argue that the special effects in this are good and. I think I'm just a sucker for practical, like just fun creature effects, as right. bad as they may be. I just, I like a big goopy creature. And this guy ripped off his face, and you know he had like the baby pumpkin head thing inside. So I, I enjoyed that. <laughs> just, that was simple <laughs> this came out in in the same year as Poltergeist, and the guy ripped his face off in Poltergeist too, and it was much better. <laughs> like, I don't, it might be different budgets. That's quite possible that the budget was just not there. Wait, ain't you coming on for when we record the Poltergeist episode? Yes. Yes, Adam is. We're going to talk about that, Casey, because I don't yeah. think it's as good as you remember it being. <laughs> yeah, everything, even arguing with the special effects, like me trying to argue that they're good, it doesn't save it from the fact that this movie is too long, mm -hmm. just too gross, yeah. and such a departure from the first one. Like, what were they... Yeah. I don't even understand what they could be hoping to go for. Like, I, I, there was it just nothing made sense. Like trying to think of anything else we didn't cover. Oh God. You want me to run down the list? I mean, we I know we that's the thing though. I know we've breezed through this, but there's not a lot of talking points for this movie. Like there's it's not. the DeFeo murders, the exorcism at the end. Mm -hmm. Um, which by the way, the brother still goes back to jail. He's gonna rotten there yeah and now the priest is possessed yeah so i don't understand the explosion wind? at the end of the movie oh that's just after oh. he was exercised the house blew up 
And then we go back and there's no burn marks anywhere. There's no, no small fires anywhere. The, the, the house blew up, but now it's fine. The house blew up, it's fine. But the house kind of does, that's right. You reminded me, I wanted to bring this up at the beginning of the, uh, near the when Sonny gets possessed, mm -hmm. that house goes to shit. Yeah. Uh, the furnace explodes. You can see that like lights are exploding because there's a huge power surge running through the house. The bed is just, that fucking made me laugh. The bed just spit. It was like on a lazy Susan. It just yeah. spun. <laughs> and, <laughs> and the rest of the family comes home. And all we get is, hey, are you okay? The windows downstairs were open. I'm like, the fucking furnace exploded. <laughs> They, were the, the they ghosts, had a real issue with priorities in this. Did the, did the ghosts fix it? Did the devil like call the was, did the devil call the HVAC guys to replace the whole <laughs> unit before they got back? Like, what's going on here? The windows were open. The windows were one of the first things I caught in the beginning of the movie when they're walking around the house and they're like, oh, all the windows are nailed shut. And I'm looking at the windows and I immediately went back to the finger scene in the original. Mm. somebody apparently also took all the locks off the windows. There were no locks on any of the windows in the second one, but they were on there in the first one. Oh. So did they replace the windows and then nail everything shut? Or did they just take the locks off? <laughs> it's like little stuff like that I was catching through the whole movie. The, I don't think anybody was making the movie. Was <laughs> exactly. Was the moving guy in the beginning when he's in the basement with the mom. Mm. like he's crawling in there he's covered in slime and flies and she's like oh go ahead upstairs and wash yourself off you don't find it odd that like <laughs> he's got slime raining down on his head covered in flies in a small basement compartment where there is no air nothing can get yeah. in or out like oh and this isn't a small basement compartment anymore though like in the original movie it was the red room which yeah. we didn't really touch on too much but it's basically just like this little cul-de-sac yeah. In this movie, it's a full-on like vestibule. Like there yeah. are archways under this. Thing. Yep, yep. The devil must have opened. Like up I kept expecting now. a tray to try to run through there to get this picture. <laughs> <laughs> we did see some zombies come through it though. Towards the, the end. The, yeah. Yeah. What was this movie? Fuck. I don't. It was all over the place. It was, you know, when when the priest. One of the things I thought was funny was when the priest got back to the house and he saw Sonny in the attic and he's like crouched on the floor. And the first thing in my head was, is he now possessed by a cat with rabies? He's sitting there clawing at the floor and hissing. And I'm like, <laughs> that's right. He hisses more than once. <laughs> and he kind of didn't have the budget for the spider walk. So they just told him like, just, just lay your it. arms and legs out and just kind of pretend you're an like angry it. cat. Yeah, it's kind of like a crap. <laughs> But yeah, no, this uh, I'm I'm excited that we got this out of the way. Um, I forgot just how rough this one was. Yeah. Part three is no better. Part three is a lousy movie. Don't get me wrong. But I think we'll have more fun with it. Did did part three? Come I know I will cross the line with flowers in the attic or, or did, did they leave that There's, kind of thing out of it? They, they know they're. The, as far as I can tell, there ain't no more flowers in the attic references in this franchise. Okay, okay good. <laughs> uh, it's all just goofy fun from here on out. Okay. This one still tried to play it serious. Um, it failed miserably. Yeah. Um, I guess, yeah, we're kind of just slowing down here. I think we're just getting into the part where we're going to, unless you have anything else, I think we're just going to rate uh, this. I have a lot, but that would take hours. So, nope, we're just going to rate it. All right. <laughs> Okay. All right. I will let you go first as, uh, as we did last time. Go ahead. Okay. Um, again, using my system, I gave this one a, <laughs> <laughs> a 3.1. And the only reason it even got that <laughs> was because of the cast and, and the acting. Cause Diane Franklin fucking killed it. She was great. She was really good. Yeah. Um, I'm a little lower than you. Uh, again, I liked uh, Diane Franklin in this. I did like the special effects, um, but the special effects are few and far. Um, and Diane Franklin's out of this movie 40 minutes in. So, yep. uh, and it's an hour and 40 minutes long, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> so I gave this uh, a two. This is a two out of 10 okay. for me. This movie is, uh, 
I've seen a lot of the movies moving forward here. Um, and this is definitely a low point in the franchise for me for a very long time. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I've, uh, I've got nothing else I can think of about this movie to say, at least nothing polite. I have nothing oh. polite to say about this movie. <laughs> Well, this was fun. Um, I'm so glad I decided to do this. <laughs> Well, then that about uh, wraps it up. Um, do you have any plugs you want to share? Anything you're doing? Uh, I do actually. I would like to plug uh, "Scream Until You Like It." If you know, if you obviously you know of it, if you're watching this, but uh, they're on. It's everything. It's convention announcements. It's horror news. It's lots of fun stuff. Movie trailers. Uh, they're on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, TikTok, Instagram all the platforms. So if you get a chance, go subscribe. Yeah, I'm bad for that. I mentioned it too at the beginning that the scream, uh, this is scream until you like it, but I don't, I never think to mention the Facebook group where that's most, that's where most of the stuff happens too. It's just a really fun community there. Mm -hmm. Well, it's absolutely right. Scream until you like it is a hoot and a half. Mike as uh, Mike and gang, I guess it's you, Mike and Victoria. uh, And Victoria. That's it. Mm -hmm. And the, the ghost ghost chaser, right? Yes, ghost hunter. Yes, from from your neck of the woods, Victoria. Fantastic. Yes. Um, yeah, scream until you like it. Definitely a hoot and half. Yeah. Um, and uh, thank you for to scream until you like it for letting me fucking ramble like this. <laughs> um, and uh, again, yeah, if you uh, if you like hearing me uh, ramble on, then by all means, go check out uh, the other half of my persona uh, at Hormonal Werewolves. Uh, we have a Facebook group as well, um, and we have a YouTube channel. And we, a lot of times like this, we'll see hormonal werewolves popping over at Scream Until You Like It. We'll see some screamers popping over at the Hormonal Werewolves. So feel mm-hmm. free to join both. Have a great time. Um, but as for this episode, I think we've just about wrapped it up. So as always, I'm Ryan. And I am Nicole. And remember. Smile, you son of a bitch. Oh, my God.